These circles are standing upright all over the place. And here we have a place in the field where none of the grain is standing, but the grass is completely undisturbed. I would say that if someone stamps all over it in the middle of the night, they'd hardly distinguish between grain and normal grass. We've also had other cases where non-native plants are in the field and are left untouched. This shows that whatever affected this type of grain practically conforms to the resistance given by these plants. What do you do with all these photos? They are archived and some of them are geometrically evaluated. Diagrams are also made on the basis of aerial photos. Books and calendars are made, but that's essentially a side effect. It's primarily all about documentation. The fascination is very strongly connected with the aerial photos. If you take a look around you, you don't see much. Most of the images people have of crop circles are from the aerial photos. The most important question for crop circle research is whether there is a real phenomenon, meaning something not made by the hand of man. And we've come to the conclusion that yes, this is clearly a real phenomenon, and it can be proven. There is a whole range of indicators and hard evidence that satisfies even the most stringent scientific standards. We started testing crop circles all over the world. Uh, by now, I think, I would guess that at least 350, maybe if I haven't counted them, maybe it's 400, that we have sampled in eight different countries, eight or nine now, including Australia, Israel, uh, Canada, the United States, Germany, the Netherlands. We can prove that there is apparently a rotational force. This rotational force contains an energy component that works like a microwave. We can reproduce many of the changes which take place in the plants and soils by means of microwave radiation. The microwaves heating the moisture inside turns to steam, and as it does so, it has to escape. Well, if the plants are young and pliable, the outer fibers are pliable, the steam escapes by stretching the nodes. That's how you get the elongated nodes. If the energy is extremely intense and or if the crop is old and the fibers are tough, then it can't get out by stretching it because the fibers won't stretch or it's just too much energy. Then it blows a hole right out at the node. If we see it as a simple circle, the extent of the damage to the plants decreases as you go from the center to the edge. And that's exciting because we can, in principle, deliver the proof that we're dealing with electromagnetic radiation here, the so-called Beer-Lambert principle, the effect of electromagnetic radiation on matter. In this case, represented in plants, and we can see here that the changes in the points in the center are the strongest and they gradually decline outwards to the edge of the circle. And that is in any other scientific research clear evidence of the effect of electromagnetic radiation on matter. What we've discovered now in formation after formation all over the world are these tiny little rounded particles, but the fact that they're perfectly spherical indicates they were in a molten state because that's how you get the, the spheres. Right. And furthermore, we not only find them, we find them deposited in very unusual ways. 
sometimes they're deposited at the edges of the circle only sometimes they're deposited very definitely in the middle and even more interestingly sometimes there's a linear deposition meaning that you'll have perhaps the least at the center a little bit more five feet out a little bit more ten feet out until you get the most the greatest amount at the edge but in a clear linear progression we have also found changes in the soils which we have analyzed. In the soil of the crop circle, there is a distinctly higher concentration of magnetic material compared to the control samples. And this material can also be shown to be distributed centrifugally from the center outwards. Additionally, we have analyzed the crystalline structures of the aluminium oxide minerals in various crop circles. It's well known that they expand under certain natural circumstances, and limiting ourselves only to the surface soil of the crop circles, we have found these crystalline structures changed in such a way that we could normally only explain it as a result of extremely high pressure. But you can rule this out because this type of pressure on the plants can't be proven. They weren't damaged and the temperatures that these plants would have had to have been exposed to would be so high that sustained exposure would have incinerated the field. It's an amazing fact. Uh, this kind of alteration in clay minerals is normally associated with sedimentary rock. When you have tons of the pressure of mountains pressing down on over hundreds of years on sedimentary rock. Uh, here we are in surface soil. I wasn't sure, but I didn't think this had ever been seen before in surface soil. And I mean, I couldn't believe it. At the 95% level, I was blown away. I thought, oh my God. So I said, you know, I don't believe you. <laughs> and so I had it done again. I hired somebody else. And we repeated the statistics because I just didn't, I couldn't believe it. Well, in fact, that's what we had. As best I can tell is that there are microwaves or something that's acting like microwaves. There is are electrical charges, which I think he's nailed down. And there are, there is strong magnetism, at least, at the very least, we have that going on. This means we can describe parts of the paintbrush or the pen, but we don't know who or what uses this brush to create these forms. In view of this modern phenomenon, we very clearly have a geometric evolution from simple individual circles to systematic orderings, groupings of multiple circles, ring systems, all the way to pictogram-like patterns which have become much larger and more complex. We can create the same geometry when we project tones onto the surface of standing water, as Alexander Lauterwasser does with his water sound images. Perfect patterns as though they were created by a compass arise, which we can see not only in very complex crop circles, but also in nature's diversity. Very clearly structured geometry emerges. Interestingly, this is the type of geometry we're talking about when a peacock displays his feathers and your eye connects the individual eyes with each other.
Deswegen stellt sich für mich why the question remains for me, is it possible that the same phenomena, the same stimuli that create a flower, the forces that ensure that the peacock's feathers conform to this proportional and aesthetic picture, also interact with what creates the crop circles. I mean, the shell of a, of a seashell, snowflakes, I mean, there are millions and millions of, of examples of nature creating incredibly intricate designs. Nature creates designs everywhere, all the time. There are also very complex crop circles that nevertheless take on nature's language of shape and form. For this reason, one could pose the theory that we're dealing with an as yet unknown natural phenomenon that possesses components that we don't understand. How are things whose geometrical equivalents are found in the diversity of shape and form of nature's bounty geometrically carried over into a field as a crop circle? We see this in crystalline structures, in the formation of a blossom or of a beehive, for example. So I can imagine that we have various sources of what we call the crop circle phenomenon.